Georgia Lester, and I graduated from Clemson in 2011. And currently I'm in medical school um, at the new one in Greenville, so it was a real privilege to be able to come back here and talk to you guys and um, just introduce, actually, Takako Sato. Um, it's awesome to see what you all are doing. I was part of the first class um, planning this, so it's great to see that everyone could make it out from being here. So I had the honor of introducing Takiko Sato. Takiko was one of the founders of T4T um, here at Clemson in 1997, and she graduated with a wildlife biology degree. She soon after started working for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Florida, and she advocated um, for many endangered species, and she also um, supported national campaigns. Um, Takako's Japanese American heritage forced her into a world traveler. She's been all over the place and um, has also allowed her to be involved in various environmental education projects and cultural exchange projects um, between the US, Japan, and India. She's doing that right now and she's also currently working with Tiger Trust as a consultant and grant writer in India. And I had the privilege to travel with Takako in 2011 to um, India for tiger conservation and I can say she is uh, truly a compassionate person. She has a heart of gold and she's a humanitarian and a conservationist in every sense of the word. Um, and I really enjoy Takako's passion and enthusiasm for tigers and I think you'll find that evident today. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Takako Sato. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a clicker anywhere? No. <laughs> sorry. Maybe I'll just hit. I'll just hit the arrow key. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sorry. We are a little disorganized here, but that's all right. Thanks for your time and um, thanks for the opportunity to uh, share my story about how I came to where I am. And uh, I know I won't be able to cover everything in the time that I have, so I'll just say what I can and then talk to me later. I'm really approachable. So um, first I'd like to share a little bit about myself and then um, go into um, the beginnings of Tigers for Tigers and then share with you experience that I had in India that really changed my life. And uh, even though I don't look it, I'm an actual native South Carolinian. I was born and raised here, but somewhere in high school I lost my country accent. <laughs> and, um, but I made it through Clemson and I graduated in 2001 with a wildlife biology degree. And um, like uh, Georgia said, I was working uh, with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I was one of the 9,000 employees uh, that David Houghton was supporting with his organization. And uh, it really was a dream job for me. Um, I got to work at Crystal River National Wildlife Refuge with manatees and hooping cranes. And then I went to Pelican Island to celebrate the 100th birthday of our very first National Wildlife Refuge, Pelican Island in Vero Beach. And then um, I moved further south to Florida Panther National Wildlife Refuge and 10,000 Islands. And um, I was able to do all kinds of great projects and work on kind of local, state, and national level uh, different events and help coordinate different uh, volunteer events and uh, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and so one of the things that I'd like to say is like we like to use tigers as our kind of keystone species that we want to advertise about, but um, I used manatees, hooping cranes, um, migratory birds, and the Florida panther to get the message across that we want to protect natural resources, our ecosystems, for the future generations. And so when I, when I do conservation, I want to save like every frog, every butterfly, every plant. <laughs> and so it's not just the tigers that I'm passionate about. But um, my husband and I decided that uh, we would move to Japan in 2010 for his job. So um, uh, since then, I've been able to dedicate more time to Tiger Trust and be able to volunteer with other organizations in Japan. And uh, I'm still working on my language <laughs> in Japanese. But um, I've really had a, uh, it's been an honor to be able to work with them. And uh, Tiger Trust is a really great organization because they not only provide opportunities for environmental education, but they also do um, programs with, uh, they train the forest guards on legal training and conduct programs in local villages as well. 
I kind of need that for my program. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to do quicker here. So. Okay. Uh, that's all right. I'll just stand here. Thank you. And uh, let's see. Hopefully, I can continue. Yes. And um, so we started uh, Tigers for Tigers with very humble beginnings. Uh, it was started in 1997 when I was a junior at Clemson. I was the president of the Students for Environmental Awareness, and at the time we were just switching off with my best friend who was the president because it was just a handful of us. <laughs> and it was like somebody, you know, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> and I think I either lost or won, I can't remember. But anyway, um, there was a student that came up to this uh, environmental group, and um, his name was Khan Devinenko, and he came up with, this was his brainchild, was to start a group called Tigers for Tigers. He's the one in the uh, blue jean shirt. And uh, he was so passionate about the idea. He was totally self-motivated. He basically was like, you can join me or not, but I'm going to create this organization. So I was like, okay, we'll jump on board with that. And so we used the Students for Environmental Awareness, which we call C, as a um, launching pad for his project. And he was really gung-ho, trying to get other student clubs involved, not just the environmental clubs and try to get the backing from student government. And um, it was pretty difficult because we only had four or five people and we were pretty clueless about what to do and what to, where to go. And he had all this in his head, so he was just kind of running ahead, 10 paces ahead of us. Um, but somehow he found out about the 1998 uh, Save the Tiger conference happening in Dallas, Texas. And he convinced the provost of the university to fund two, two students to go to that to network amongst the different conservation groups. And so, um, oh, sorry. So we were able to attend that and we made many different connections with different groups. Uh, we were able to hear different opinions about the status of tigers at that conference. And uh, Exxon was the sponsor, but there was a speaker who quite blatantly like threw it back in their face and said, you know, you gave us a few thousand dollars to do this conference, but you're using millions of dollars to advertise the fact that you did it. <laughs> and so, you know, they're just like green image, trying to make their company look good. But, um, but they did actually have a lot of good conference sessions. Uh, I attended the Chinese-Russian uh, dialogue session, and it was really frustrating because they had translators from Chinese to English and then English to Russian, and it took forever. <laughs> and what was really frustrating was China would Say so, you know, Russia would present an idea, what if we did this for the tigers in our area, you know, right on the border? And China would be like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll take that back to our leaders and we'll get back to you on that. And it was like, <laughs> we can't move forward, you know, it was really frustrating. So I had a lot of respect. Hey, hey, before oh. Further, mm. the in the back oh. On the yeah. No. Wow, great. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, um, I had a lot of respect for the WWF translators trying to promote the dialogue between these two tiger countries, and uh, it was kind of tense at times. Uh, we were also fortunate to be able to meet some of the field biologists that were in the field tracking the tigers. And, of course, as a wildlife biologist, I was drooling at the time. <laughs> and I think we met uh, Mr. Ron Tilson, too, at that conference. And so uh, we came back to campus and we were pretty pumped up. We were like, yeah, let's, you know, let's really go with this. And Khan put so much energy into trying to network with the other student clubs and trying to unite the whole student body behind the project. And it was really difficult because it moved so slowly and he was like so gung-ho about it. Um, he got quite frustrated. And uh, he wanted to get a donation checkbox on the, on the sports events tickets, like a football ticket so that people can check the box and then donate extra money. But the athletics program kind of would have no part of that because they're really uh, tight-fisted with their money. And so we just kind of continued as we could, um, spreading awareness on campus amongst the student body. We would set up tables. Um, and it wasn't until after I graduated that the club became its own official entity, um, separate from Students from, for Environmental Awareness. And um, 
And so, oh, eventually Dr. Tonkin was able to uh, start the conservation biology class nine years ago, right? And, <laughs> and he was able to uh, take his Clemson, the Clemson students to meet Tiger Trust and connect them directly with the, the challenges that the tigers face in the beautiful Indian habitat. And I joined one of these tour groups in 2006. I invited my parents. My dad had this dream to um, see the birthplace of Buddhism. And um, there were about a total of 20 of us attending that tour. And there were students, alumni, and then people related to the school. And during our trip, we had a very successful time with about 17 tiger sightings over a three-week period. And uh, not only did we see tigers, but we saw all the other wildlife at the, in the habitat, the peacocks strutting around, the monkeys playing in the trees, and of course, India's food, which I loved as a vegetarian. Uh, these are all very new experiences, but then there was also the culture shock. Um, felt strange to me that you know, we could spend money to do tourism when I saw such poor people living in the streets of, of the city. And um, what I realized with, was that I was making a cause to help de protect their water, their wildlife, their natural heritage. And I was hoping that every dollar that I can spend, my ecotourism dollars could benefit the communities where we went. And so um, later on, I heard an unofficial uh, stat that one tourist dollar equals six tourist do uh, six dollars in the Indian village community wherever we go, because the services that they provide at the hotel provide services that support that in the community, like the elephant and the farmer <laughs> that feeds the elephant, and so uh, the chain goes down. And so uh, this feeling was really solidified within me that. I could support their national parks. And when we visited Bandavgar, Kana, and Ranthambur, um, we could see the wild tigers up close, and you could see that fire burning in their eyes. And for me, this was really life-changing. And one of the most memorable um, tiger sightings for me was in Bandavgar, riding on the back of an elephant. And you, ride, you go up a ladder and sit on the top of the elephant, and you sway back and forth through the grass. <laughs> and you're hoping to see a tiger up close. So um, I was with my mom on the back of the elephant, and um, the rangers know where the, uh, where the tigers have settled down to rest, and so they'll take the elephant tours back there. And uh, as we got closer and closer to this tiger, my mom got more and more nervous, and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, what are you doing, mom? What are you, what's going on? And she was like, I'm scared, Dakako. <laughs> It was like, we're getting closer and closer to this tiger. And, um, and I was like, well, yeah, a normal person <laughs> is going to like want to run when they see the tiger this close. And, uh, and I was just so excited. My hands were shaking. But we were 10 feet high on the elephant already. And then the tiger was up on a hill. So we were basically eye to eye with this tiger. And um, it was pretty intimidating. She could have jumped on us, and we could have been lunch <laughs> very easily. But um, thank goodness that um, tigers and elephants have a kind of healthy respect for each other, that um, they know that they can both harm each other and be harmed by the other one. So they know the safe distance. So we were within that safe distance. And we were able to watch her for a long moment. And this tigress was so beautiful. And I realized that she wasn't interested in us as food. And um, somehow I got these shots. Uh, my hands are shaking like they are right now. <laughs> and, um, you know, I've seen tigers in zoos. I've seen them in circus shows. And I must say that those experiences were nothing compared to seeing the tiger in the wild. Um, whenever I see tigers in zoos, they look really bored or they're asleep. <laughs> um, they look sad or they look broken. But there was nothing that looked broken about this tiger. She looked to be in perfect condition, and she had the spirit burning in her that lasted, you know, like that made her survive, helped her survive through this harsh Indian environment. And I couldn't believe that we were so close to this tiger. She just laid down in the grass and relaxed, and she just stared off in the distance. And um, I was just amazed by her kind of grace. And she was very self assured. Um, and I knew that she was, she knew that she was the one in charge of the encounter. If she wanted to leave, she could leave and it was up to her. And what felt like 20 minutes 
<laughs> it was actually only three when I looked at my pictures. Um, she eventually got up and walked away. And as she did, I realized that she didn't want anything from us. She didn't look back in fear or in anger or in longing. Um, she just walked away confidently. And as she walked away, I remembered that wild green fire burning in her eyes. I could feel a strong pull to protect this majestic creature and its habitat. And there was nothing in her that needed people, but it was my understanding from her that she needed us. Us as humans to stop destroying her habitat, to stop poaching, to stop killing her prey, to stop invading her territory and changing her ecosystem. I felt that as a representative of the human species, that we as a society shoulder the burden of protecting wild beasts like this, who in reality have no need for us. The wildlife and habitat can flourish and continue, the wildlife and habitat can flourish if only we as humans can stop messing it up beyond recognition. So this is when I decided that it was my life's mission to protect the wild tiger. Um, I decided to be a voice for the tigers and to really cheer on those organizations that are working to protect it. And um, I wanted to be a positive force for this change in um, cons conserving their endangered habitat. And during this trip, I pledged my support to Anjana and uh, Tiger Trust. And I soon realized that as a Fish and Wildlife Service employee that I could do some networking and help them maybe get some funding for their projects. And so I networked with the International Affairs and introduced Anjana to them in a meeting in Washington with Dr. Tonkin. And eventually we were able to get two Tiger Grants over the years. And by staying connected with David and Anjana, they kind of keep me on course too. Um, I've been able to continue to volunteer uh, toward my time, towards the, towards the success of our programs. And I attended another um, tour in 2011 and that's where I met Sean and Carmony and they were so sincere in their efforts um, they just showed like a level of dedication that I hadn't seen in the past students it was really encouraging and when they were talking about forming this national coalition I was just so so um, proud of their efforts and I don't know where Khan is but this is the dream <laughs> of the dream that he had way back in 1997. Okay, and uh, I wanted to show you a video of the tiger encounter we had in 2011, but I couldn't get that, get that video up, so I'll show it to you some other time or send it, I'll post it on the website. I'll post it on the website. <laughs> I couldn't get it here, but... Um, yeah, so the last sighting we were with uh, the it was a cultural exchange program with the Indian students and the Clemson students. And um, we went to the tiger park to see the tigers and we were having a hard time seeing tigers. Uh, it was the last tour of the last day. It was like almost sunset. <laughs> it was like, okay, this is it. Come on, tigers. <laughs> We've seen a lot of monkeys. <laughs> We've seen a lot of peacocks. And so anyway, we finally were able to um, uh, somebody spotted a kill of a deer, that w a sunbar deer that was on the bank of a water, of a, a small retention pond. And um, the sunbar were barking, and that's not really that uncommon to hear them barking, but uh, we kind of stuck around and we heard the, we, we saw the kill, so we thought, well, the tiger might be back soon, and so we were waiting around. And we saw the tiger come out of the grass, she laid down in the grass and was kind of surveying the scene with all the jeeps there. And then she was like, okay, I'm hot, I can't take it. So she came to the, to the water. And it was a really beautiful scene because she just kind of hung out in the water for a while. And then um, some bugs started bothering her, so she, she just kind of shook it off and ran out of the water. <laughs> but it was an instant moment that all the, all the students, all the Clemson students, all the Indian students' jeeps were just in the right place at the right time, and everybody got to share in this one experience, this once-in-a-lifetime experience. And we could realize that no matter if you live in the same country with the tigers or if you live 10,000 miles away, you can still love the habitat. You can still love the tigers. It's all the same. And so um, I think that through these kinds of shared experiences, we can really, like, like we're having here at this conference, we can 
and take this and use it as a motivating force when we go back to our schools and go back to our countries, <laughs> some of us. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I just wanted to share some other cultural kind of exchange things that I'm doing. I um, collected artwork from Japanese students and I brought it with me on my trip to India in 2011 and also um, did it this time when I was in the US. And I basically like get other kids to draw pictures in a response to the picture that I give them from a Japanese student. And it's basically like something that helps connect them to you know, some place really far away. <laughs> and um, uh, I like this project as like kind of earth art, pen pal exchange. <laughs> I'm, I still had to come up with an official name for it. But um, I just wanted to take advantage of my ability to travel and then ability to connect people and then also to try and promote conservation and awareness. And so, so far I've gotten um, through other networks with various teachers and artists, I've gotten over 150 kids kind of involved or aware of this program and uh, hope that many more can participate in the future like the Cubs to Cubs, Cubs for Cubs program. But I'm really amazed at all the Clemson students that are here today and um, you know, despite all the things that are happening like the Boston event, um, I'm amazed that we could all travel and get here and the earthquakes in Japan. You know, there's so many things to remind me how short life can be. And I, I have like such a strong appreciation for this life that I have. And, um, you know, I feel sort of an irony when we're working so hard to save wildlife when there's so many horrible things happening around us. But it's through activities like this, they're life affirming. We can celebrate, you know, our, our diversity. And it's something that really adds to and deepens my purpose in life. And so, um, and when you look at the countries that, where we're doing the tiger conservation, uh, the, the people who are doing the patrols are actually putting their life at risk in order to protect the wildlife. So it's, it's something that we can all connect with on a, on, a cert, on a deeper level. And actually I faced depression when I was young and um, I've always sought nature as my refuge from myself and from other humans. And so it's, it's just a part of who I am. And so um, I always find a sense of peace in nature. And um, when, I'm in, when I'm facing these internal demons or external forces, like the tragedy in Boston, um, you know, I just feel like I learned so much from wildlife and seeing these amazing animals, um, seeing these tigers survive despite their difficult situations. And so I believe that we have to take all of this reality and uh, turn it into whatever we can to progress and make things better. Um, <coughs> There are so many people who approach environmental activities out of anger or um, based on a feeling of injustice and they want to shake the cages, rattle the cages, and that can be a really strong motivating force, but I also have seen it very destructive and polarizing the issue, making it worse. So I really feel like um, as a Buddhist, everything is connected. Um, what is done to the earth is done to me and also on the same side, um, on the opposite side of that same coin. Uh, whatever peace and harmony I can find within myself, I can use that to improve the situations around me. And so it's very empowering and I hope that more youth can take this kind of perspective into mind uh, so that you don't burn out when you're doing these kind of projects. And um, you can really, with this attitude, come up with long-term solutions for these really challenging problems that we're facing. So, yeah. I think that we need to focus on solutions and um, solution, solutions that benefit the earth and also deepen our humanity at the same time. But that's why I, re I really enjoy participating in these um, cultural programs. So sorry, I forgot to advance my slides. <laughs> but that's why I, I really appreciate being able to participate in these cultural programs. Um, and uh, I believe in using our own individual creativity to bring the world together and make it feel smaller. Um, I really want to encourage everyone, you all have your own passions, um, whatever drives you. And I hope that you can like um, plug into this Tigers for Tigers movement and expand it and make it your own thing. You know, like whatever um, passion you have, um, you can just expand the movement little by little and or by big steps too. And you can create something unique that you, only you can contribute towards this conservation movement. So I hope you can find that compass within yourself and just keep walking towards that goal in your own way. 
And I think that the coalition is beautiful because it's not about fitting in and being all the same, but actually celebrating these differences that we have as uh, different schools, different states, and um, being able to make a greater impact. So I look forward to our future progress together. Thank you. Any questions from any students? <laughs> <laughs> okay. when I was in a people to people program in high school and uh, it just made me fall in love with rainforests so that's when I, when I was living in Florida I just kept moving further south <laughs> it's like more and more tropical <laughs> but yeah um, mm, it's very difficult yeah you answered it <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> any other questions where do you see the future of tigers going I know, I know you're hopeful but what's it? oh wow um, yeah, I really hope that um, uh, this program can continue to grow. Um, we've actually been able to inspire other groups. Uh, I lived in Florida and they had a manatee county and they created, a friend of mine created manatee hands for manatees. <laughs> and then uh, David just told me about a group that uh, started Terps for Terps. Terrapins, right? Up in, uh, where was it? Uh, Maryland, yeah. So they started creating a group to protect other um, turtles. <laughs> and so, yeah, I hope that it can just continue to grow. Um, I don't want to limit it with my own thinking <laughs> of what we can do, but um, I'd really like to be able to, as an alumni, bring in more alumni, um, make your organization 10 times bigger than it is, <laughs> and uh, let's see what we can do. Anyone else? Angela? Yeah, I just want to say one thing. It's not a question, it's sharing. When I saw her for the first time, that was, I think, 2006, and we just uh, we just met over the trip in the evening in the office, and she, we talked to each other, and she said, well, I want to talk to you when I come home. And Delhi has a lot of barber cuts in summer, oh, yeah. so it was a very hot weather. So I thought maybe she's just one of those you know, like, just given her mind that she wants to do something. So she called up, I waited, I said she's to call up in the next two days, she called up. Finally she called up and she showed up. There was no electricity, the street lights were off, my house had no electricity, and she was there being escorted by her local yeah. guardian, whatever the person she was staying with, very far away from my house. And we spoke to each other in a candlelight <laughs> and um, then I, I think she said, well, I'll do this and I'll do that. I, I almost dismissed her off as like, you know, the young person who's wanting. But now she's an integrated part of me as a person. And then of that I trust. So I think she's a great motivational force. And today I'm telling her in her presence that she has motivated me a lot. It's not that I have been motivating her. She has been call up her at any time reach out for her any time, tell her any problem, she's there for you. For Tigers, whether it's that sentiment which works for her or whatever. So I'm sure involving her in the summit and taking clues from her, how dedicated she can be, whether she moved, and she never even once thought that she's left a country where she was you know, grown up and she had been, she just beautifully adjusted I, I hats off to her, her adjusting abilities are great. So I'm sure it's an asset which Clemson has given to Tiger Trust, and it's an asset to have her. So I'm sure she will be a great force for your national family. Thank you. This was not a question, it was just sharing off my love and affection for her. <laughs> Thank you.